Good morning. Imagine you see this headline in the South China Morning Post here. You are unlikely to read it unless you're really interested in semiconductors or in artificial intelligence. If you are, the important parts are here highlighted in yellow. A startup company in Shanghai is focused on AI using the scaling law while overcoming challenges in getting the advanced computer chips. China's demand for higher computing power will be never ending with generative AI, computing power systems, data, algorithms, all driven by the scaling law. China's trying to catch up to the US in AI computing. This company launched the Step 1V multimodal LLM with 100 billion parameters, and they're testing Step 2V with a trillion. If you're like me, you don't understand or care about much of any of this. So why is this article so important? Let's highlight different parts in yellow, because no matter what we know about AI or semiconductors or the tech battle between the US and China, we can understand this part. A new startup in Shanghai, founded a year ago by the vice president of Microsoft. Zhu Yibo is his name. Here's another guy, Zhang Dashin, who was also at Microsoft and was the chief scientist there at Microsoft. Zhang was in Microsoft for 16 years, leading the projects, leading, not working on, mind you, but in charge of, Bing Search, Cortana, the voice assistant, Azure, Microsoft 365's natural language learning programs. These are all programs and applications that I use every day. What else can I understand here if I don't know much about AI or semiconductors? I get this too. The computing center they're building is going to be one of the most important ones in China. Zhu was asked, what about the restrictions on getting the most advanced AI chips? He says, it's not a problem and didn't explain. What can we assume here? The vice president of Microsoft makes a lot of money. He has millions of dollars worth of stock options. He has a multi-million dollar house in well, wherever he wants a million dollar house, he's got one. His buddy, Zhang, the chief scientist at Microsoft, was also living large, making a lot of money and perks working for Microsoft. They decided that they're going to cash in their stock options, sell their houses, quit their jobs, and buy one-way tickets to Shanghai to set up this new company. Before they did that, shouldn't we expect them to know where this new company is going to get all the chips they're going to need? Wouldn't they have some assurances first that China is going to have the chips they need before they sold their furniture and sold their house and packed their suitcases? Wouldn't they have figured out how to solve the chips problem before they called their friends and said, hey, let's go to China? Every day, experts in the United States, semiconductor experts, tell us how far behind the Chinese are on the chips. And every week, those same experts are surprised by some new breakthrough the Chinese have just made that they weren't supposed to be able to make. We should not listen to our own experts anymore. We shouldn't listen to what they're saying. We should watch instead what their experts are doing. Factories don't build semiconductors. Countries don't build semiconductors. People build them. Smart people do. If you're going to make semiconductors, what you really need are lots of smart people. China has a lot of smart people, and three more just came back. They just quit their multi-million dollar jobs at Microsoft to come here. And we should ask, why would they do that? This is Lushan National Park in Jiangxi Province. Be good.